of key leaders from Asia have gathered in Russia's Vladivostok for an annual international forum aimed at highlighting economic potential of the country's far eastern region. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and Chinese Vice President Han Zheng are among those attending this event, despite a Western nation's efforts to label Russian President Vladimir Putin a pariah on the international stage. During a speaking with Prime Minister Anwar, Mr. Putin expressed interest in developing relations with ASEAN. The Malaysian Premier echoed similar sentiments and noted the, under, the underutilized potential for economic links between ASEAN and Russia. Mr. Putin also met with Chinese Vice President Han Zheng. The Russian leader said he's expecting to see President Xi Jinping at the BRICS summit taking place in Russia's Kazan city next month. Mr. Han also reassured Mr. Putin that Beijing has, quote, is, quote, is, quote, full of confidence in strengthening bilateral relations. And uh, for more details on this event, Dasha Chonishov is live from Moscow. Afifa Arafin standing by for us as well in Kuala Lumpur. Let's get to you first, Dasha. Uh, the significance, should we be reading more or anything at all into the timing of this year's Eastern Economic Forum? Well, the Eastern Economic Forum has taken the firm place in the calendar of the events for Russia and uh, it is an important event, uh, first of all, in terms of the development of Russia's Far East. The Kremlin uh, spokesman Dmitry Peskov has most recently said that Far East has become one of the top and priority regions for Russia. Therefore, the development of this region, uh, which is uh, also dependent on this forum, um, is paramount for the country. The Russian president himself has said that uh, the Eastern Economic Forum should serve for the benefit of the development of the countries of this region because it is the place where the business is meeting uh, the state. And we also understand that even though uh, Russia has uh, been largely isolated by the Western countries, this forum still manages to attract a lot of international guests. The total number of the participants is 6,000 according to organizers. They come from 76 countries and uh, there are the heads of 650 Russian and 44 foreign companies. Now, uh, the Kremlin has admitted that the international sanctions have impacted the participation of the international guests in the forum. But nevertheless, the Russian president has managed to hold a series of bilateral discussions um, aside from the uh, official program of the forum. Uh, on the sidelines, he held uh, the meeting with the uh, Chinese uh, pre Vice President Han Zhen. And in this meeting, uh, the sides have reaffirmed their bilateral cooperation that has reached according to uh, the officials the unprecedented levels. They have also been talking about the prospects in which they can further deepen this cooperation. So these are the new spheres, the new areas. And also uh, the expectation was that in this meeting, the sides have managed to discuss uh, what has been discussed uh, on the eve uh, when President Vladimir Putin traveled to Mongolia. So this is uh, part of the wider um, uh, Russia's, uh, the Russia's wider re relations uh, within the region. We also understand that President Vladimir Putin held a meeting with the Vice Prime Minister of Serbia, uh, Alexander Vulin, and in this meeting they have also been talking about trade. And obviously, uh, the uh, another meeting that the President uh, had uh, in Vladivostok was uh, with the Prime Minister of Malaysia. And in this meeting, the sides have agreed to deepen their cooperation because this uh, at this moment we understand that trade uh, is not that high, but they do want to expand that. All right, thanks, Joshua. Let's get off Afifa now. Afifa standing by in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, as uh, Dasha just mentioned, Russia standing in relative international isolation right now. So Mr. Anwar making that trip to Vladivostok might come, might just come with slight criticism on why he's doing this, setting himself apart from perhaps other Western partners. So what would Mr. Anwar be hoping to get in return out of the Eastern Economic Forum? 
Well, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim is in Russia, we know, for the 9th Eastern Economic Forum. And he met with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday. And both leaders talked about how they wanted to foster deeper collaboration. So on a bilateral level, Mr Anwar spoke about enhancing relations between Malaysia and Russia in all fields. This as both countries have open trade, especially in the semiconductor industry. And at a regional level, Mr Anwar added that as hosts of ASEAN next year, he will make sure that his fellow ASEAN countries will take the same position to enhance their collaboration with Russia as well. Now, Mr. Anwar's two-day visit to Russia and as a keynote speaker at this forum, it's really meant to underscore Malaysia's position that it is free to be friends with any country and has no feelings of hostility. The visit also comes as Malaysia has expressed its interest to join BRICS, and this is something that Mr. Anwar hopes to re- iterate to the Russian president, especially as Russia is the bloc's chair this year. Of course, Russia's rivals have reason to be wary of this warming relationship between Russia and Malaysia. And as we know, Malaysia has emerged as a hub for uh, the global chip supply chain. And over the last two years, we have also seen how many global tech giants as well as U.S. companies have invested billions of dollars in Malaysia's tech landscape, developing infrastructure, data centers, AI and other forms of technology. And so these companies would be very keen to protect their investments in the country. But of course, observers are saying that Mr. Anwar has always adopted a non-aligned stance since he came into power in November 2022. And his only focus is on attracting investments and growing his country's economy. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, Dasha Chunichova speaking to us in Moscow and Afif Arafin just there in Kuala Lumpur as well.